When you have actuals and forecasted values, we often compare the two in a chart like this one over here. But maybe you're more interested in where you will be at the end of the year. And then you need to combine the actuals from the past with the remaining forecasted values to create a line chart like maybe this one. And that is what we are going to build in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In my videos, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how we can build this connected line that shows the actuals from the past and the remaining future values. Now the tricky part here is of course the DAX measure that we have to write. Now here I already built a table where we can test the measure. So here we have in the first column the sales forecast and the second one the sales actuals. Now for the measure that we are going to write, I want to take the actuals where we have them, so for the first few months, and then for the remaining months I want to have the forecasted value. So let's add a new measure. And this is going to be my sales and forecast measure. So it's going to combine the two. And we're going to break it up into several steps. And we can do that by using variables. Now first we need to find the last date for which we have actuals. Now here in this example we have sales data. So we can call this variable last sales date. Now to find it, now let's first try a max function and let's see what happens. Okay, so we're going to find the maximum and we have a transaction date. And that's what we are going to return. So we are going to return the last sales date. Now you see that a measure returns the last sales date within the filter context. So the filter context here is determined by the year 2020 and the months. So for January, we get the 31st of January 2020. But what we actually need there is that very last sales date that we have in a data model, which is the 30th of June. 2020. Because if we have dates before that very last sales date in our data model, then we want to return the actuals. And if we have dates after that point, then we want to return the remaining forecasted values. All right, so we have to change the filter context in our calculation. So let's go back. And to do that, we need a calculate function. All right, so let's put this on a new row and let's wrap it inside of a calculate. And then here we want to calculate still the maximum transaction date, all right? However, we are going to remove the filters. Now to do that, you can either say all and then dim date, uh, so that you remove the filters on dim date. You can also write it like this, right? that you say remove filters, that's the same thing. Or you can just leave dim date out, it's also fine, okay? So then you remove any filter, all right? So we can leave it as it is, Press enter again and let's see what it returns. So now you see it returns the very last sales date that we have in our data model because we removed basically the filters that came from the visual. So now that we have this date, we can go to the next part. So let's go back to the measure. Now I could imagine that the first thought that you have is to use an if function to check if we have dates before the last sales date, then return actuals. And if we have dates after, return the forecast. Now let's try this and let's see if it's correct. So we can say if, and then we can look for the maximum date. So date and date table. And if the date is after that very last sales date, then we want to return the forecast. And otherwise we would like to have the actuals. Okay, now let's close the brackets and then here return the result. And you see that for January until June, we have the actual values. And then from July onwards, we have the forecasted values. Now the total, however, looks a little bit strange because it is exactly the same as the sales forecast. And of course, I was expecting here a combination of actuals and forecast. Now, why is this? Well, because the last date in the filter context there, well, is the 31st of December, 2020. And is this after the last sales date that we have in our data model, which is the 30th of June. Yes, it is. So therefore, it returns just the sum of the forecasted values, which is not what I want. And it could potentially also have a problem in the month June. In case you don't have the actuals for the full month, like me, I'm lucky in this case. However, if you only have, let's say, until the mid of June, then the last date is after the last transaction date. And therefore for the full month, it would show the forecast, not the combination of the 
actuals and the forecast. Okay, so this formula as we have it now is not perfect. So let's make it better. And let's start off by deleting this if function. And I'm going to create another variable. And let's say we have a variable for the actuals. Now over here, we already have a measure sales actuals. And then I create one variable for the future forecast. That's so the remaining forecast values. That's so future forecast. So now we are not going to approach it with an if function, but we are going to approach it by changing the filter context using the calculate function, because we basically want to take the sum of the forecasted values. However, not all of them, but only where we have dates after the last transaction date. And this we can do with calculate. So let's type in calculate. And we want to calculate the forecast, so the sales forecast, but not all of them. We want to put in a filter. Okay, so let's type in filter. Now, what table do we want to filter? Our date table. Now, here we need to write our filter condition where we want to say that we only want to have the dates after the last sales date. So we can write dim date, date column. The date needs to be after the last sales date. Now let's close the filter function. Let's close the calculate function. And then here for our results, we want to, first of all, return only the future forecast to see if that part is working. So now you see we have the remaining forecasted values and the total also makes sense. Now let's go back to our measure again. Now we can go here to our result variable and bring back the actuals as well. So here we want to have the actuals and a measure is working. However, let me also show you an alternative. If you go back, to the measure. Now, instead of using here the filter function, let me delete it and let's see what happens. So over here, delete filter. Now you see that the result looks a little bit strange and that's because we are overwriting the filter context from the visual, the year, months. And we are replacing that with only those dates after the last sales date, okay? Now, to fix that, we can wrap this inside of a keep filters function just like this. And now you see we have the correct result that we had with the previous measure as well. Now to make that last point a little bit clearer, let me go back. Now you could replace here a sales forecast. Let's comment it out. And let's put in over here, min dim date. And we're going to combine that with a hyphen. And then over here, the max dim date, okay. And then let me remove this keep filters again. Now, instead of the result, let's return then that date filter that we have for now stored in future forecast. So I'm just gonna copy that over. And you see what the problem is, that calculate function was overriding the filter context from the visual and replaced it with a new filter that goes from the 1st of June until the 31st of December, 2020. Okay, and that's why we need that keep filters function because if this filter condition is inside of a keep filters function. It keeps the filter context from the visual and doesn't replace it, but adds to it. So now you see the correct date filter for every month. So if only from July onwards, we have dates over which we want to calculate that future forecast, the remaining forecast, but it still keeps the filter from the visual. So in a measure, we can then replace this date filter. We don't need it anymore with the actual sales forecast. Okay, just like we had it before. So let's now use our measures on a line chart. So the usual is that you have the sales actuals versus sales forecast, something like this over here. But now I'm going to take out the sales forecast so that we only have the actuals and I'm going to add the sales and the forecast. So I'm going to place that one onto values. Now let's go to formatting and make sure that the two series have different colors. So here on the data colors, we can say for the sales and forecast that it should be maybe gray. And there you go. Now, what is important is that the order here is correct. So you first need sales or forecast and then sales actuals because there are two overlapping lines. Because if you have it the other way around, I put sales actuals first, you see only the sales or forecast line. But I want to have sales of forecast and then sales actuals. So this is how you can create a visual that combines the actuals with the remaining future forecasted values. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. And if you got some value out of this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next video.